Hello my friend, welcome in to another FC24 Tactics video. I'm Ash, as always, and recently I did a video covering what Ruben Amorim's potential Liverpool tactics could look like, and I thought it was a really fun exercise to do. So in this time around, we've decided to go back to that, but this time we're going to take a look at what Graham Potter's potential Manchester United system could look like in FC24. So to stop you freaking out about the lineup that you're looking at right now and commenting about why Ericsson is in the team, let's roll the intro and crack on with it. So then, first things first, what are the principles of Graham Potter? Well, we've tried to take them and translate them to this Manchester United side, just tweak them a little bit depending on the personnel. With regards to Graham Potter himself, we know he likes third by third progressional play. He likes to build up from the back and progress the ball through the thirds. He likes lots of movement and that's very important. It's why his teams have always been able to create a lot of chances going back, not only to his Brighton team, but Swansea and Ostersunds, etc. They've been prolific in the amount of chances that they've created. And that comes from the high volume of movement that we get so that we know, particularly in the attacking third, there is a lot of mobility. We also know though that he likes to have sheer control over the central areas of the pitch and he likes to crowd out those numbers in order to give them as much potential as possible to retain the ball. With that being said, with regards to the actual formation and the positions, we've gone with a narrow 4-2-3-1 shape. It's very similar to what we saw him tinker with, not only in the opening spell of his reign at Chelsea, where they were actually unbeaten for a period of time. It's also something he tinkered with at Brighton as well. We had this narrow 4-2-3-1 shape, and rather than having out and out wingers, he had those mobile attacking midfielders instead, and it's something that I think suits his Manchester United side well. With regards to those false wingers that we have, Mason Mount and Christian Eriksen here, absolutely perfect for this role. We know he's already got precedent with Mason Mount. He really likes him. They have a really good relationship from his time at Chelsea. You can bet that if Graham Potter's the manager here, He's a banker to start. Similarly with Christian Eriksen, this is a role that he's actually played before. When he was at Tottenham, he used to play that wide right role, but it was kind of a false winger where they had Kane up front, Deli Ali just behind, Son on the left, and Eriksen would play on the right, and it's absolutely perfect for him as well. Now, obviously, that was a couple of years ago, and he has since, of course, gotten older. He's in his early 30s now, but I still think he has the mobility to do this role and to do it well. Likewise, we've spoken about mobility. That comes from the fullbacks, Luke Shaw, Diego Dallo, very mobile players, and these central midfield pairings as well. Kobe Minor is going to be the sort of player that Graham Potter really likes, and he will try and get him into the team. In this case, he's actually pushed up to a central midfield. Think of that kind of Pascal Gross role something that I think he could do very, very well. Similarly with Amrabat over Casemiro as well, just far more mobile, but also has that aggressive tendency on top of that and someone who can play through the first and be that possessional pivot. So all in all, we've got this 4-2-3-1 narrow. Mount is a lamp. Ericsson is a ram, as you'll see here. And we've also got the fullbacks pushed up to be wingbacks as well. And that's going to get them wider and it's going to get them further at the pitch to really create that width. Similarly, as we've already mentioned, Amrabat is the defensive midfielder in this case. But Kobe Mino, he is as a centre midfielder. And as I say, we're trying to replicate that kind of Pascal Gross role that we saw. Let's talk about what we have from a tactical perspective then. Starting off with the defensive style, we have got press after possession loss. A very counter-pressing scene. That's part of his principle as manager. Team width is down to 10, nice and compact, nice and narrow, and then the depth all the way up to 80, giving you that high block. And you do have the speed in this defense here in order to play this as well. The offensively, then we've got the build-up play on slow build-up and then the chance creation on forward runs. Again, similar to what we've already talked about where he likes third by third progression, but we're going to see a lot of mobility. It's going to enable him to prolifically create chances. The width is on 60, it's balanced. It's going to help you give that complementary kind of system between crowding out the central areas of the pitch but also not having it too narrow so that you're not going to have any width whatsoever instead these wide midfielders these kind of false wingers are sometimes going to drift out wide and that's what we're looking for here players in the box is on seven giving you roughly four players in the box in crossing situations and in the corners of rikiks both of these are on four next up we've got the player instructions in but before we do get onto that if you want to see exclusive tactics videos that are only available not on youtube you want to get access to my discord server behind the scenes videos of my football scouting career and on top of that lots of scout reports as well as my fc24 tactics package check out my patreon lots of fantastic perks and rewards on there the best way to support the channel and as i always say this channel would not be going without that patreon so a huge thank you to all of you who are continuing to pledge to me and keeping this going and as i say you guys check the link out below you'll really enjoy it 
With regards to those player instructions in, starting off with Anana in goal, we've got him on comes crosses and then sweep a keeper. The two centre-backs, both of them are absolutely fine. You don't need to change anything. And then naturally, with the two full-backs or wing-backs in this case, we've got them on join the attack and then overlap. Amrabat in this case has that defensive midfielder. He's on cut passing lanes. They do instigate a laning and orientated press. So that is something that Graham Potter has has always really done and employed. He's on stay back whilst attacking. His defensive position is cover wing, but it's important that his positioning freedom is deep line playmaker. And as we speak about, that mobility is playing in freedom there. Mino, on the other hand, he's not that out and out box to box midfielder, but he is someone who's going to get forward more, particularly in the crossing situation. So whilst it's important that we have him on stay back whilst attacking, this is because we don't want him running in beyond the striker, but we do want him supporting attacking moves. So we've got him on balanced crossing runs as a result. He's also on free roam for his positioning freedom in order to complement and reinforce that message of mobility, progressing the ball, finding space. With regards to Fernandez as the cam, he's on comeback on defence to get him tracking back. And any support on crosses is getting to the box of the cross, positioning freedom, stick to position. Now then, some slightly differing roles here. Let's start off with Christian Eriksen. We've got him on comeback on defence. This time his support on crosses is actually stay on the edge of the box. This is similar to what we spoke about with his Tottenham role before, something I think you'd see him doing here as well. He's really longing to instigate the play from deeper, and he's going to be that advanced pivot as well. Positioning freedom is going to be on free roam this time in order to get him dropping around and picking up the ball from deeper in certain situations. With Mount over on the other side, he's on comeback on defence and getting to the box or the cross. This time, he's positioning freedom over his drift wide. As we spoke about, we sometimes do want them getting into the wide areas just to make sure they are supporting those wing backs and that they're not going to be too isolated in that case. Finally, with Hoyland up top, very much a generic kind of set of instructions. We've got him on stay central through support runs, but his attack runs are on mixed. He's obviously someone who, yes, can play in behind, can find those runs to peel off from the defender, but he's also got he's also strong and tall. So as a result, he can play that hybrid role of more of that complete forward. And I think that's something that Graham Potter would really like in his system as well. Finally, his defense support is stay forward. And so let me know what you think about this system. And if you do try and re recreate it in game, let me know how it works for you. It's something that seems to be very, very successful for me, as you'll see from the gameplay down below. So hopefully it is for you as well. Don't forget to check out my Patreon. As I've already mentioned, lots of fantastic perks and rewards on there. And it's the best way to support the channel in the long run. And with that being said, we're going to finish it there. Thank you very much for watching. And until the next one, I will see you soon.